Hi guys, uh, welcome to the second part of the WebGem Trap app uh, tutorial series. Um, in this tutorial, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, different user interface layout that SAP provides. So there are five different layouts: uh, flow layout, row layout, matrix layout, grid layout, and the form layout. Uh, so flow, basically layouts. Uh, you know what are the layouts? Layouts are uh, you know uh, predefined templates uh, given by SAP uh, to arrange the UI elements in a certain way on the screen. So, for example, flow layout. Flow layout arranges the different UI elements in a sequential order from left to right. Uh, it arranges UI elements uh, side by side. Uh, for example, you have let's say you know ten buttons and the ten input elements. Uh, and then it will be uh, they will be arranged uh, side by side one after the other from left to right row layout we can arrange the UI elements you know those 10 UI elements you have on the screen you can arrange them in a different rows uh, for instance you can have first two elements in the first row and then the next four in a second row and the remaining things in the third row matrix layout it arranges the UI elements in a matrix manner um, I hope you know uh, if you guys know what matrices are how they look like and the grid layout it's similar to the matrix layout but there's a slight difference which uh, you know we'll talk about when we go to the demo it arranges your elements in a grid layout uh, the form layout is, is a new layout that um, you know uh, SAP has come up with recently um, it arranges your elements in a different sections in the same container uh, I uh, I will not be able to you know go through that layout in the demo I will uh, leave that as an exercise to you guys uh, you can explore that it's not it's not that difficult okay so these are the five layouts that are available in the WebGen Pro now uh, let's look at the you know the demo okay so what I've done here is I've created a component uh, called example 03 um, it contains a view and a window and inside the view, uh, if you see, uh, I've created 10 UI elements. So how do you create? You just click, uh, right click on the root UI element and uh, select insert element. Then you can give uh, you know, any name for the ID. And then we have something called uh, text view, which is used to display the text on the screen. Right. So I've created 10 of, 10, uh, of text view type elements here and uh, you can define the text that uh, you guys need to display in the property text property here All right so whatever you enter here it will appear on the screen um, so I've created 10 and I've uh, you know given the text for the text one for instance I've given first element text 2 it will be second element and, and so forth so uh, let's see how it um, now the layout property is defined at the root level right all these UI elements are basically the children of this uh, parent UI element so whatever you create uh, it will be uh, assigned under this UI element so the layout property is basically defined at this level at root level if you see here by default system selects flow layout and you can see there are form layout grid layout matrix layout and row layout so um, then if you see the properties uh, uh, you know of the flow layout we have something called wrapping right we'll see what it is uh, let's see how uh, this looks in the browser so if you see here um, you know you can see uh, the all the text that we have given for the all the UI elements it appears in sequential order side by side from left to right right so now if I uh, minimize this window let's say I want to you know decrease the size of the window uh, you can see the text is automatically wrapped in the window right? I don't see any scroll bars here right so the for example sixth element is at the right rightmost uh, part of the screen if I reduce further now the sixth element is come to the left Right. So the wrapping is automatically done by the system. Uh, the reason for that is the wrapping properties is checked here. 
Now if I remove this wrapping property and then activate this now let's see how the output looks like right. so now I'm going to decrease the size again now if you see there are scroll bars right because uh, I've unchecked the wrapping now the wrapping is not allowed so if you decrease the size of the window uh, you know, the text still remains in, in, in one line right so that is the uh, you know flow layout about now coming to the other layouts if I want to explore the other layouts just change this to let's say row layout right okay now so as I said row layout arranges the UI elements in separate rows so if I want to have uh, let's say the first uh, you know two elements in the first row and starting from the third row third u element I want to have a second row what you can do there's something called layout data property on each UI element each uh, user interface element you can just select row head data here okay so what it says is now if you see here you can see uh, the change here the first element and the second element are in the first row the third element starts in the second row so what I've done is I said I'll start what I'm you know doing it here doing here is uh, I'm saying to the system that from the third UI element start a new row and this text three will be head of that row so that is what row head data if you want to you know let's say from the eighth you want to start another row third row you can just make this the eighth UI element layout data as a row head data and you can see that from the starting from the eighth element uh, there is a third row. Let's see how it uh, appears on the screen. Right? So these are it appears. First element, second element, and from third element, this is second row. From eighth element, this is third row. Good. So, uh, and then some of the you know interesting properties of the row is uh, there's something called H align, which is basically the horizontal alignment. It's like you know the Microsoft Word. If you have uh, left justified, you know, right justified, and the center, so. So similar to that, right? You have, can have center, you can have end of line, you can have force left and justify. So basically, what it says in the particular column, how you want to display the text. You know, should it start from the beginning of the line or should it start from the center of the column? Something like that. Then you can have something called row background design. If I change, let's say, you know, something for the two for the eighth element and for the uh, yeah, third element. I can say mm, fill one. You can see here there's a different background color that appears for the second row and for the third row. And uh, also you have row design, which which uh, which is basically uh, you can add um, you know blank spaces uh, at the right and the left of the UI element. So L stands for left and the R stands for right. Um, yeah, so if I say L pad, you can see here, um, I can, okay, let me see, uh, sorry, and there's something called V gutter, it's basically, it says uh, how much, uh, you know, the padding width. See if I say x large. You see this the padding before the third element increased. If I say medium, so the padding is of different size here. So you can uh, have padding, and you can also have what size of padding uh, you want to do for a particular UI element, right? So let's see how it appears in uh, browser.
okay so we have uh, left padding here for the third element and the second and third row appears with a different background design okay so this is for uh, you know the row layout now let's do for uh, matrix layout yep. okay so matrix layout as I said uh, we can arrange the UI elements uh, in a matrix ma matrix manner. Um, sim you know, in the, in the earlier, as in the earlier case, we can uh, have a different columns and different rows in matrix. So, if I let's say I want to uh, have text four in the second row, I can go to the layout data and say matrix head data. Yep. So, from the fourth element, we started a new row, and then I want to have seventh, let's say in the third uh, row. I can change it right so it's as simple as that um, <coughs> now uh, the interesting properties in the matrix layout is again it has cell background design but then here um, you know the difference between the row layout and the matrix layout here is if I select cell background design it affects only one cell uh, if you see if you remember in the row design uh, row layout it affects the whole row so we can uh, make the cell background uh, particular to a cell here I can uh, choose call span basically call span is uh, how many columns that particular UI element should occupy on the screen so by default it's one if I make it three now so this particular seventh UI element occupies one two and three UI element space on the screen okay and um, also there is a horizontal element you can have vertical alignment you can have a V gutter that for the used for the padding um, yeah we can set the height so there are different properties I mean you can play around and, and see how it appears in the screen so let's see for this particular setting how the screen looks like okay cool so if you can see seventh element the background design is different and it occupies three column uh, width on the screen right so that is for the matrix layout now coming to the grid layout it is uh, exactly similar to matrix layout uh, you know only uh, difference I would say is uh, you know the, the padding for the columns right yeah, so if you can see that for grid layout, uh, the U elements are arranged you know, from top to bottom, not from the left to right. Uh, let's see, let's see how it looks like in the UI. See, yeah, and I think the background design uh, still holds for the seventh element. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange. Uh, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the column count to uh, 3 okay bingo so because uh, I've made seventh element as uh, you know three columns call span as three columns so it arranges uh, three UI elements in one row and the three UI elements in the second row because seventh element occupies three columns it's considered as you know one row and the remaining uh, UI elements appears on the fourth row right? so you can define the number of columns right and uh, you can also you know define the cell spacing how much uh, space should be there uh, in between the cells and also the cell padding right so we can you can do you know, a lot of things uh, with grid layout there is more control uh, you know compared to other layouts grid layout has more control you can have you know, a lot of you know padding up padding top padding right you can do padding top as well padding bottom you know not just left and right 
even the top bottom you can do padding vertical alignment horizontal alignment you know call spans so a lot of things uh, you can do let's see how it appears on the screen okay cool so uh, that's all for the second tutorial um, you can explore the form layout you know similarly you can just select the form layout and, and see uh, by changing the properties how it looks like on the screen um, for the next video uh, I'm planning to get into the real stuff uh, a bit complex stuff explaining what is context what is component controllers uh, and, and all the stuff so uh, thanks for watching uh, we'll see uh, we'll meet in the next video thank you